Look at that. Talk about food porn. There's nothing like the artistic elegance of a beautifully prepared charcuterie board. If you're a foodie, I dare say that your meal isn't complete without a beautifully arranged charcuterie board. But where did this trend first come from? How can you create a perfect charcuterie board? And how is French law involved? Stay tuned as we slice into the facts. What started as a simple selection of meats, cheeses, and crackers has become a culinary spectacle on social media. It's beautiful. Today, charcuterie boards can include a random mixture of the food you have on hand, but the fanciest arrangements are a carefully curated choice of foods based on an age-old tradition. It began over 10,000 years ago. Humans discovered that smoking freshly killed meat helped it stay edible longer. We continued perfecting this method. By ancient Roman times, pork was doused in vinegar before being smoked and finished with salt. Legionnaires carried slices of pancetta with them for a quick snack. The Romans also crafted techniques to age cheese. They shared it with the Gauls, who inhabited modern-day France, parts of Belgium, and Germany. The first charcuterie boards were combinations of preserved meat and cheese. Rich Romans invited guests to lavish dinner parties where a selection of meats and cheeses were available. Although all social classes enjoy cheese, smoked meats were more expensive. So these charcuterie boards were only enjoyed by the wealthy. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. In the 15th century, French law decreed that raw and cooked meats could not be sold in the same store. Some stores only sold chiacui, or cooked flesh in English. Sounds less appetizing. These charcuterie stores led to the creation of the first charcuterie guild, which still exists today. By the 16th century, meals of smoked meat and cheese were popular across Europe. If you had been in France, you would have munched on a lunch of pâté, cheese, and baguettes. In Italy, you would have enjoyed salami, Parmesan cheese, and wine. And in Germany, you would have eaten dark bread with smoked meat and pickles. I'll take all three, thanks. During American colonial times, the wealthy would nibble on cheese, walnuts, and fruit after a hearty meal. In the 1800s, British and French diners would have a separate course of cheese during their dinner. Today, an elegant charcuterie board is a must if you want to impress your dinner guests. But what do you need to do to create a charcuterie board worthy of posting on social media? Well, first off, don't try to do too much. Offer three to five cold meats to avoid overwhelming the diner's taste buds. Choose different meats, such as a dry-aged meat, a wet-cured mortadella, and a sausage, and slice them thinly. Choose cheeses that will complement the meats, and include at least four, each with different textures and tastes. A soft brie, tangy goat cheese, hard cheddar, and aromatic blue cheese will create a symphony of flavors. But don't cut the soft cheeses. Leaving them in the wrappers will keep them fresh and tasty. Add some acidity to balance the fat in the meats and cheeses. Pickled garnishes like olives, onions, or gherkins work well. Some sweet ingredients like honey, fruit, or preserves will help bring out the meat's flavors. They'll also provide a nice contrast to the textures of the meats and cheeses. And don't forget the bread. A variety of crackers or a French baguette will make a perfect companion to the feast. For the ultimate charcuterie board, purchase the finest ingredients. The better the taste, the better the experience. If you want to be decadent, you could always add some foie gras. We'll have a look at the rise and fall of that liver paste on another episode of Origins of Food. Thank you.